What's up, everybody? Michael Silva here. The NASDAQ Composite early trading session traded up almost around 2%, but faded most of those gains, closing it up just less than half a percent. And this happened with some of the other large index products as well. Is this forming some sort of a topping pattern or is it consolidation? We are going to be getting into that today as well as some crypto and some various indicators. So let's go ahead and do it. If you notice here, I drew a couple of arcs. This right here resembles a head and shoulder type pattern, okay? And this is on the hourly time frame. So we're looking at 60 minutes. We've had a huge run up and now we're seeing some consolidation. So what we need to pay attention for is a break of this lower trend to potentially come fill this gap. This gap can act as support. We can always get back tests if we start breaking down from those levels. And then the lower range that we could find some support at is as well would be around 11,150 in the NASDAQ composite. I will note that we do have some divergence, kind of um, a, a subtle divergence, negative divergence. You can see momentum is slowing both in the RSI and the MACD as the price action pressed up higher. So is this just consolidation or are we going to break to the upside? Another way you can look at this is if you were to just draw a trend from this high to this high, boom, you can see that price is contracting here. So that is the theme of today's video. You're going to see price is contracting. Um, we'll get into the SPY now. If we take a look at the SPY, we have the upper um, expected move right at about 420 and the lower range is at about 400. Now we also have prior support. Prior support can become an area of resistance. We're still trading below that 50 day moving average that is declining. So it tells me that yes, we can have some upside potential here up to around 420, maybe even potentially push it out of that area. But just be mindful that there is still tremendous risk here to the downside. So we got to wait to see if we break out of this range and where we break out of it. What range am I talking about? I'm talking about this range. You can see price is continually contracting and getting tighter here and volume is contracting as well. So from a bullish perspective, you wanna see 417.50 uh, cleared and it would be nice to see volume step in on a break like that. If that is the case, um, that could be the start of a pop higher. Now, on another good note here, we do have this price action on the 15 minute time frame. We have this big move to the upside. And now after a big move, we're consolidating. And right here is what's known as an ascending triangle. And it's really just pointing out, you know, from an expansion move to now we're contracting and you can see we are putting in higher lows. So the bulls are making progress to the upside, but the bears are still holding their fort right here. So if the bulls take over this bear camp, well, guess what? That is could potentially become now a bull camp so we can break out and potentially obviously head higher. So that is a possibility. Now I want to point out as well, all right, we are trading below the five day moving average, not by much, right? And then, you know, as every day continues, we lose another day of data. So this can flatten out and potentially start curling over, making it an opportunity to come tag this lower range or fill this gap beneath us. We also have the divergence in both the PMO and the RSI. So it's showing that, you know, price action went up higher, but momentum did not support that gain. Now, at the end of the week, we have some big data coming out, and this could really cause that type of expansive type move. We have core um, inflation, we have CPI coming out. I think on also, um, we have a report on Thursday. It didn't mention it here. Um, I can't remember what it is. So I'll have to talk about it later, but we do the big one right now that could have an impact on the market is uh, CPI. Now, what took place today? Well, the 10-year yield definitely took a nice, nice little rocket ship move to the upside, closing um, at just above 3% again. So 30.38 looking at the TNX, which is um, just over 3%, sorry. Um, if you look at the TLT, the TLT broke down from the bear flag and it looks rather bearish at this particular point of time, especially when you see the PPO curling itself over too. However, if you start looking at the weekly risk ranges and what the options market price is in, you can see here we're already right about at that lower risk range. So we may head a little bit lower, but that could be a potential opportunity for short term um, going long TLT. Now you got to be careful because of the overall trend. Um, so be very, very mindful of that. Another thing to watch is the dollar. All right. The dollar has been consolidating. All right. The S&P 500 has been consolidating. You can see when the dollar breaks down, 
the S&P 500 rips up higher. So the dollar is going to be an important one to watch. Now, keep in mind, the dollar is in an uptrend. All right. And we typically, the trend is your friend. So if the dollar continues its move up and we start seeing a little pop from this level, get back above that 20 day moving average, well, that could very well put pressure on the S&P 500 to take a little bit of a breather. Now, overall, the S&P 500 is being constructive and it's bullish. We've had a lot of data last week that came out and it's still holding up. So where can we potentially you know, be very mindful of if the price were to start heading down. Well, and, and can it continue to be bullish? Look at 405. 405 is also in line with a gap fill. So that can hold as a level of support, but also to note that is actually the um, just just under the lower risk range. So it could hold right here, but this little zone in here, all right, can, it'd be more bullish to hold 405, but just understand that 400 is also that key level too, okay? So it's more of a zone. All right, let's continue on to the Qs. The Qs is also very similar, right? We have this declining volume, right? It's contracting, price actions contracting. Uh, we'll go ahead and go into the 15 minute time frame. This right here, you can see, right? We had an explosive move, megaphone pattern up. It started expanding again. Now it's contracting. This is actually known as a diamond pattern or a diamond top. And it's really just to highlight the contraction once again on both the um, slowing momentum in the RSI and the PMO. Now, what does a diamond top breakdown actually look like? Well, here's just a drawing. You would just measure from the peak high to the peak uh, to the trough here, and then you would just measure it down and that would be the potential target. Now, if that is the case, well, guess what, where that lands us? That lands us to just about the the lower risk range down here, which is about 295. Now it can also break to the upside. So we got to uh, be aware that, you know, that's, those are always a possibility, right? It's just highlighting that we are contracting. Now we are below the decline or not, sorry, the declining. We are above a more neutral five day moving average. So as this day, um, starts up we have one two three four and we're going to lose this day's data and we're going to just now go from this day on so the more we stay below that five day moving average this can start curling over so if price action if you're bullish got to get back above it and then we can start potentially it, it, it flattened out a little bit but you can see um, that we need to hold above it in order to keep that trend um, going Okay, and if we do break down this gap fill right here at about 300 can and be a little bit of a bounce level too. All right, so let's take a look here at the IWM. As you can see, we had this explosive move and now price is contracting just like the other index products getting tighter and tighter. You can see volume is contracting. This one's holding up rather well comparatively to the other indexes, but you can see here we did that gap up and most of the move faded. Be looking out for an explosive move here soon. It could come... Thursday, it could come Friday. Uh, if we take a look at the 15 minute time frame, when I say this is holding up better than the other index products, that's because it's trading above the inclining five day moving average, which means to me that the bull, the bias here is still bullish. So understand price action is getting tight, does not mean that it can't break up to the upside. Yes, it is a bearish structure in a overall bearish trend, but be mindful that the market can do really weird things. We can see pop pops up and then it could revert, creating somewhat of a bull trap. It could also just continue to rip up higher too as well. So we need to prepare ourselves for a move. Now, something that would give us quite a clue is if we do break down and we see a big um, volume bar come in, that could signal distribution and we have further downside. Um, on another note too, if we start breaking out further to the upside, get back above this uh, June high, early June high, on some good volume too as well. It could indicate a thrust upwards, which could be bullish um, to keep to keep an eye on. Now, if we take a look at something like the RVX, which is Russell volatility, it is still holding 30, but it does look like it might take out that 30 level heading down lower would perpetuate the Russell 2000 most likely higher. Keep in mind, we still have a higher, uh, we still have um, higher lows and we have the Bollinger Bands you can see contracting the, the width of the Bollinger Bands are getting tighter and obviously that can take a while this is looking at a weekly time frame but if we do start breaking down to the downside here in rvx and the russell starts going higher start looking at i would say 30 um sorry 25 43 25 50 25 this zone in here um for where the russell volatility may start to find some movement back to the upside and kind of hold within that compression 
pattern that's taking place. Uh, VXN, which is NASDAQ volatility. NASDAQ volatility is holding above 30 still at this time. It was up a little bit today. So that to me is a little bit of a red flag right there. So we'll continue to monitor that. I don't have the VIX on me for some reason, but that's okay. A couple other indicators that I'm keeping an eye on, the Nizy McClellan oscillator. This is using um, the traditional calculation. I wanted to call out that price action is moving higher, right? We hit another high, but you can see the um, negative divergence right there that is forming. We actually talked about that on this blow off move here, um, that up to 350. And now so far we're building out that negative divergence and price action is really just consolidating. So being that it's a negative divergence, it doesn't mean that the price action is going to head lower. It's just to be some, to, to, to be aware that, hey, you know, if we do start breaking down some key levels and this starts playing out, it could present itself some further downside to hold and remain on that current trend. Uh, same thing here. This is ratio adjusted. This is the Nizy McClellan oscillator as well. You can see it just in a different format. Also that negative divergence, not going to hold too much time there. And then we have the uh, advanced decline line. This is, you know, just still trending lower and it's it's mapping out really the same thing that um, the New York Stock Exchange is doing. I just wanted to also call it the NYA, the New York Stock Exchange. It is back testing a prior area, right? Prior area of support. And once support is broken, it can become a level of resistance, which it, which it is holding as resistance at this time. But price action is kind of just butting its head up against here. So if we start breaking up, that could open the doors to some further upside. Let's take a look at a couple BP charts here. BP um, Info, so BP INFO, this is for the technology sector, right? These are big, big uh, caps, which can put a lot of weight on the NASDAQ and can put a lot of weight on the SPY. It is a subtle divergence right here in overextended territory. It's very small, but just be mindful that, hey, we're, we're up there at the higher end there, which you know, we could consolidate out of this, um, or we can take a little bit of a breather here as far as the price action in XLK goes, even even the um, NASDAQ 100. Uh, if we take a look at the BPC OMPQ, so this is NASDAQ composite, right? We're almost into that overbought territory. We're creeping up in that way. Last time we were there, right, the market started to roll itself over. We talked about earlier the head and shoulders type pattern that was forming. So, you know, this could very well be some sort of a topping pattern. We just need to pay attention to those those levels that we just recently uh, talked about at the beginning. Now, if we take a look at the BPNDX, this one is just about also in that overextended territory. So a lot of things lining up here to be not necessarily bearish, but to be more cautious in the near term. Um, especially since we haven't got that main data out yet. And by the way, we have economic data here uh, coming this week, but then I think we have the Fed um, the following week. Another indicator is the trend indicator. This has not hit the lower range yet. Um, last time it actually, it looks like it did these times. It did not. Last time it was right here. And the one right before that is one that I mentioned off. And you can see when it hits those levels, we can see some weakness as highlighted in the other previous vertical lines. But as it's down in this range, just be mindful that if we do come down into that area, I'll, I'll let people know on either Twitter or my Discord or here on the, the, the nightly recap, um, just to be aware that, hey, some bearish activity can step in in the short term. Another one to call out here is this indicator. It's been a good leading indicator for fine volatility. I don't put too much weight on it, but you can see every time that vertical line uh, here, right, those pink highlights, that was when the rate of change between SPIP and GOVT, when the rate of change went up to around 1.3, which it just tagged recently, volatility was, you know, not too far behind and it kind of popped from those levels. And today, right, volatility was rather flat. We had a little bit of a pop, but it didn't really have too much of an effect on the market other than erasing some of its gains early on. So did it help out by knowing this? Maybe, but I, it's still a little too early to tell, um, in my opinion. Let's hop into Bitcoin, the sale to shift indicator darn near about to cross up through zero. We're seeing a little bit more strength come in today, which is quite positive for the price of uh, Bitcoin. Remember, we need a weekly close above this. That's how my signal works. But some people like to front run the early moves up. And that's always a possibility. Just be mindful of the overall trend. What do I mean by trend? Well, the trend is clearly down. We're below all these key moving averages, right? 5,200, lower highs, lower lows. And then another thing that I wanted to call out here is we are in a rising wedge structure. We, I pointed this one out on Twitter, right? We came down to the lower range. I redrew it out. And you can see we're holding as support into this area. So it can definitely come up higher. Maybe even shoot, try to get, get outside of it. You know, 35 would be a key level to watch. That would be back testing these prior areas of support. See if it holds as resistance. 
create somewhat of a little bit of a bull trap, very similar to what we saw here. And we'll see if the bears reclaim, you know, their, their trend or if the bulls can hold up. Right. So if, it, uh, another one to look at is Ethereum. Ethereum has been just bumping his head on this trend line, this um, declining trend line. So if we start breaking above that, that can open the doorway also to come back to around 22 to 2400 in this range. So we'll see here if that is the case. If we get that buy signal, I'll let everyone know, but that's all I got for you on today's episode. Everybody have a wonderful night.